Well, what I'd like to sit down with uh, Carol McLeod and uh, get to know you better. So, Carol, how long have you uh, had Just Joy Ministries? About 10 years, 10 although years. it was birthed in my heart many, many years ago. What was the, what, was there something that happened catalytic in your life that uh, said, hey, this is something I believe the Lord wants me to do? Yeah, there, there was, John. I, um, I was a depressed Christian for many years. I don't know if you know that or not, but hmm. Craig and I had two little boys. I loved them so much and we wanted to enlarge our family. And I got pregnant and lost the first baby at 12 weeks, then lost a baby at 15 weeks, wow. then a baby at 16 weeks, then a baby at 19 and a half weeks, and we lost our fifth one at 16 weeks. Oh my, how old were you by the time that fifth one had been lost? I was um, in my mid-30s. Oh my. I was in my mid-30s. And then after that, I couldn't get pregnant anymore. And so I was depressed. I was so depressed, John. And not only was I depressed, but I developed an addiction. And the addiction that I developed was to the Word of God. And the Bible delivered me from that depression before my circumstances ever changed. Just start reading it every day? Read it every day. You know what, I would, I would read the Bible when I was doing the dishes. Mm -hmm. I would have the Bible open on the dryer when I was folding laundry. I would have the Bible open between my legs when I was playing with my little boys. I was so addicted to the Word, and still am, that I would put Bible verses on three by five cards and laminate them yeah. and take them in the shower with me so that I was never away from the power in the Word of God. So the Word of God truly did a transformative work in your heart and attitude. It did, it, it healed How you me. began to see life. It did. You know, the psalmist said, my soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your Word. You could have so easily become a victim Yes. Uh, felt sorry for yourself. Right. And, and I, say, I don't say that marginally. Right. Because it's very serious what you experience. But uh, your, your, your love for God's Word and mm -hmm. your saturation in God's Word mm -hmm. really became that medicine for the soul that transformed you and I guess then helped launch what is the ministry you have today? It, it did because... I knew what the Word of God had done for me. Mm -hmm. I knew it could do the same thing for other women. And so I raised my children, and then the, my children left me the nerve of yeah, those yeah. kids, my, John. My, my wife and I tell them our kids fired us. <laughs> I know, they outgrew yeah, us or they did. something. That's right, the nerve of these kids. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. And so now I just try to help women live well, because you know what, John, I cannot change women's circumstances but I can change the way they process their circumstances. And so that's my call. And one of the things that reflects, I guess, the, the confirmation of a call is mm -hmm. that God has given you a platform and that there are people listening. Right. There are people that are actually listening to you right. and, and people are um, wanting to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. and to God be the glory for that. So this led to speaking, I guess, first yes. and sharing your story, and then it led mm -hmm. to writing. Mm -hmm. And more recently, you have engaged yourself in daily Radio, which uh, you 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 share with us, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're we have a weekly uh, multiple mul multiple plays weekly on Sirius XM channel oh, okay. one sixty seven, Crossroads Talk Radio uh -huh. that I get an opportunity to contribute to, but you're on daily. I am, and it's the Family Network. Family Talk Network, and that's channel what on one thirty one. Channel one thirty one. So you're just uh -huh. down the dial from us, right? And 2.30 Eastern time in the afternoon? Yep, every day, Monday through Friday. That is a fabulous platform. Are you getting feedback from that we as well? We are. We're getting feedback from around the country and Canada. We love hearing from people who have been touched. Uh, but fast forward into the okay. favor God's giving just mm -hmm. to establish the fact that you have a, a, a growing ministry. Right. We're, we're delighted to have you here this Thanks. week. And you're just down the road from us in, uh, in Buffalo. Right. Um, let's talk about what it is that we, we've just gone through this uh, uh, you know, recently the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon, mm -hmm. what women want and the mm -hmm. emotional, physical needs, et cetera, mm -hmm. and, uh, the spiritual needs. And there have been responses in the biblical world we've talked about here on 100 Huntley Street. Take us to the landscape because you've written these books, uh, No More Ordinary, Living the Life You Were Made For, another one called Defiant Joy, and then Rooms of, of a Woman's Heart. You know, I'm a guy. I'm okay. a middle-aged man, uh, older middle-aged man. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I've been married a long, long time. Women are at different stages of life just like mm -hmm. men, but is there a generalization that you find that connect with women that you speak to across the generations? What's the focus? What's the heart of women these days? What do they desire or want and what are you telling them? Well, I think what women want is joy. And we've looked for it in all the wrong places. We thought a trip to Hawaii, 
marrying the guy of our dreams. Yeah. We, we thought an Ivy League education or a six-figure income or a designer wardrobe was going to bring us joy, but no, it didn't. Those things make us happy, but it's not that inner joy. You know what, John? I think that a woman can go through almost anything in life if she knows where to find joy. And joy is not circumstantially bought or birthed. She is that hungry for joy. She is. She is. Because women want to live well. Yeah. They want to make their lives count. Um, now, one thing for women is that life is seasonal. We've sort of alluded mm -hmm. to that today. Sure, sure. Um, and, and you've got to know what season in life you're in in order to do it well. For instance, John, we live in the Northeast mm -hmm. where winters are really hard mm -hmm. and we don't plant flowers when we should be shoveling snow. Mm -hmm. Well, that example transcends to our lives too as women. You've got to know what season in life you're in to do it well. Define the reality that you're in so that you right. can maximize the life God's given you. Exactly, right. exactly. So let me take a few minutes okay. here. There's so much, and you're going to be with us. You're, you're here all week. Right. Let's talk about your your uh, episode with cancer. Okay. Can we do that? We take can. us there because when you and I began talking about you and coming and contributing mm -hmm. to the program, that had not hit you, right. and that's less than a year ago. It is. So tell us what happened as best you are comfortable okay. with or yeah. can, mm -hmm. and then where you are today. Okay. This this it helps us know your journey. So the in, stage you're in. It, my season of life. That's right. Yeah. So in October, um, my mammogram did not go well, my yearly mammogram. And may I just say, women have your mammograms every year. Mm -hmm. And I had to have a biopsy and I was diagnosed with cancer. John, I was the first person in our entire family who's ever heard the word cancer. Well, That's remarkable. It, it, it really is. And so I was scheduled for a lumpectomy, and the pathology report did not come back well. And so I had to have a mastectomy. And during this whole mm. time, I cried out to God. I am a word girl, as you know. I love the word. And before my first surgery, I said, God, I need a scripture. Give me a scripture, and I'll be okay. And then, because the Lord loves me so much and gets me, I said, P.S. Lord, and if it could please not be Romans 8, 28 or Jeremiah 29, 11, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. And in that morning, John, I was having my quiet time. I looked where I was supposed to read, and I was reading in Nahum 1, 15. One of the minor prophets. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't you, you, quote you that the, verse. You blow the dust off of Nahum. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this is what it said. The evil one will never pass your way again. He is cut off completely. And I knew I had my scripture. There's the word. There's the word. And I applied it to my life. I prayed it. I declared it. I shared it with everybody who would listen. But I also knew this, John. The only reason that God would allow me to walk through a cancer journey yeah. was to make hell smaller and heaven bigger. Yeah. That's the only reason he allows one of his children to suffer. And so this whole journey has been a blast. It's been a joy. It's been a delight to go to oncologist offices and operating rooms and testing rooms and, mm -hmm. and taking the joy of his presence where darkness rules and reigns. And today you stand cancer free. I am. I was declared cancer free last week. Oh. All glory to God. Yeah. And I say, would you do something for me, please, uh, for us? To. Would you uh, just look at this camera right okay. here? I'm just going to coach you, if you don't mind, a little bit. No, do it. Would you just, the camera is speaking, just take one minute and just share with the folks out there, uh, ladies especially right. that are watching, who right now may be joyless. Okay. And then uh, just close it with a brief word okay. of prayer. Just a moment. Would I you would do love that? To, yeah. Please. You know, it's, I can't change your circumstances, but I, I can help you process them. And this is what I can tell you is you were made for joy. God made you to be a container, a receptacle of his joy. And you know what? You're a perfect fit because where you are weak, he is strong and his strength wants to fill you with the joy of his presence today. Now, I'm not a magician. I, I'm not a counselor, but I can tell you this. I'm a girl who's been healed by the power in the word of the Lord. So open your Bible, start reading in the Psalms and word your way through life. 
apply the word to your life and let it do a significant and powerful work in you. I, I can't tell you how to make a million dollars. I, I can't tell you how to get to Hawaii, but what I can tell you how to do is how to access the joy of the Lord. And believe me when I say I'm praying for you today. Yeah, and you know, there is, uh, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, there is a prayer care center in this building where you can call 24 hours a day and um, pray for, with someone to help you uh, get your joy where it ought to be in your life as it's connected with obedience uh, to the Word of God.